No, for the writing fest of writing fest module three, where you can say anything that you want. Just makes sense. Actually, no, you can't say anything that you want, but you can say a lot of stuff. So just try to mix. Vice Vibes is a music company which records Caribbean music for new artists. The company stores all the songs of each of the artists on digital media. The employees of Vice Vibes Music Company use specific software to produce, edit, and record the music. A clean water licensing agreement allows. The hmm? <laughs> Jesso, explain what a licensing agreement allows the company to do. Well, they just told us that they store the information. There's a music company which records stores all the songs. A licensing agreement allows the company to. Um, I'll have a little problem with it, sir. Like you need to know how certain industries work. So when you when you do this, like because I know about the music industry, I could answer this question. But what about the child that doesn't know about the music industry? What about the child as, you know, be playing Genshin Impact all day and have no idea how the music industry works? How are they answering this question? So the licensing argument allows them to keep partial rights to the music because they produce, edit, and record it, thus giving them a share of the profit. Yeah. Amos boy? If we get him, if we get the answer sheet to this, I want to see the answer to this part. You see this particular question here? I want to see what the answer. That no, it's very weird. It's a very very weird question. Hmm. Okay. Describe one licensing argument which is suitable for the music company. It can be an individual license. It could be an individual license because it could be one artist. Because it's each artist. Okay, let me say single user. Even though it could be multi user, because it could have multiple artists on a record label. Single user would allow an artist to submit their work and have it be made available online. You could get multi too. I would say multi user also. If you use multi, you would want to say multi-user would be able to be like record labels. You could register multiple artists. Yeah, or multiple people could be working on his song, yeah. Yeah, so this one could be a good answer also. Over two marks, I guess picking one and giving an explanation for it should be good enough. I, I guess so. I believe. All right, the company's music producer discovers that a new artist used a large portion of a song from a previous artist outlined two possible laws that the new artist could have violated. You could have violated copyright and plagiarism. No, yeah, plagiarism. I hope I spell plagiarism correct because I always spell in plagiarism wrong. Copyright because the song is copyright, plagiarism and trademarks. No, patent, copyright and trademarks. Plagiarism is copyrighted, sorry. But it can't be a patent because a portion of a song, portion of a song can be patented. You can't, you can't patent a song. You could patent an invention. You could patent an invention. You can't patent. Because copyright is a subset of plagiarism. Copyright because the song is a written work that has a melody and lyrics that are attributed to the owner only. Hmm. Hold on, I gotta check something on the syllabus. I mean, I want to write. I want to write. Yeah, syllabus, syllabus, syllabus. Right, they have plagiarism, paraphrasing, incorrect citation, digital media, and then they have laws, intellectual property terms, proprietary data, copyright patents. See, I don't think um, plagiarism is not a law. That's what I do like that word. But yeah, I, I guess they're looking for, for plagiarism. Because the new artists would be passing it off as their own. Example, Kanye or AKA. That would make an examiner happy. Yeah, because you name drop Kanye. Describe two implications for the company using the digital media of, of the previous artists without seeking permission. Or they could get a lawsuit um, that asks for part of the um, profits from the song. Or they could get a bad reputation <laughs> for being known for stealing 
I kid you not, I've seen that in an in a exam before. Like, bad reputation so they could be blacklisted. That was actually on the syllabus, like, blacklisted. That was kind of weird. Um, you could also train that they'll have to make a settlement. Yeah, those are the ones on the syllabus. You could be blacklisted, yeah. The company G streams the music is in a popular online platform which does not have any policy restrictions. Ooh, dangerous. State three social implications of young unsupervised audiences listening to music on this online platform. A social implication? Implication one, sharing music without permission. Two, vulgar music can be exposed young people can be exposed to vulgar music young people can be exposed to can be exposed to vulgar music three what is our third one what is our social implication of young unsupervised audiences listening to music on this online they have no policy restrictions meaning any age anybody could do it so they could share the information they could be exposed to vulgar music and they can be, I don't know, they could be groomed. They can have conversation with sexual predators. <laughs> this, this answer is a stretch because I don't know if the online platform even, even allows chatting. Because they didn't say anything, this is an online platform. It doesn't say they have a user account. Doesn't say you could chat. Doesn't say you could send messages. I I don't know. What was a good third one? Like, if it's about the music, three implications of young unsupervised audiences listening to music. So if they're listening to music on the platform, they could share the music. They could be exposed to vulgar music. What else could happen if they listen to the music? They could be exposed to cheating. They could be exposed to creating a culture of not paying for music. All right. Yeah, we will leave out that one. Our bar question mark here. Expecting everything to be free. All right, it's a good one, yeah. Expecting everything to be free. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I guess. Because that's like Chinese who watch streaming sites like like Soap Today. Today, Soap Today went down. And the, and everybody was like, no, Soap Today gone down. How to watch my shows? Well, pay for Netflix. Like, yeah. And then it came back up and it was like, well, why would I pay for Netflix when I could watch it for free here? Yeah, you have a, you have a good point. I'm expecting everything to be free online, which it is not, which it is fully not. Okay, last question. Let me go. Time for me to go and sleep. It's bedtime. Several Caribbean countries have experienced natural disasters such as hurricanes and earthquakes. Describe three action points which should be included in a disaster recovery plan for expected companies' data. All right, when it comes to companies' data, it is major thing is where you store it. That was point one. Two, who is in charge? And three, critical processes, critical um, services. Um, priority. So you should say that um, the disaster recovery plan should tell you where it is stored. The data should be stored in a, an offsite place that can be easily accessed after disaster. Who is in charge? The persons that should be contacted for various recovery tasks to be completed. Example, managers or IT task force slash T, something so. And the critical servers are priority listing. The listing of services slash servers that should be meted first when getting the recovery. Yeah. Um, those are three critical things. Usually when you do not disaster recovery plan, there are six things or five or six things. But I think those should be okay. I can't remember all six of them. Normally I'll tell my students to remember three important ones and you should. Um, yeah, that should be. That work in our disaster recovery plans all over the internet. All right, a large telemarketing company did not secure its hardware during a natural disaster. It's kept two major environmental risks on how each risk could impact the environment. I hate this. E-waste can get into the water courses and contaminate the water with lead and cesium. 
I just list two metals, eh? It must have lead and magnesium in a circuit board somewhere, and yeah. Um, our next environmental risk will be um, um, what's called this thing? Non-biodegradable parts of the computers would pile up, disrupt. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know. I hate this e-waste question because it only have like two things that happen: one, precious metals that leak somewhere. And then two, you just create a landfill or you just create a dump and it's have pollution. But for poor Max, I know what else they wanted to give. I I honestly, I think this is a two mark question, but for poor Max, again, I wish I could see the answer sheet for these things. All right, after the disaster, the employees who were working remotely used personal devices and personal email addresses to send business emails to clients. The three policies or practices that the company should implement relating to employees use of personal devices and personal. Alright. One, all they're doing is sending business emails to clients. And when they are personal devices. Personal devices. Um devices should have a password. A strong password. Two. Emails should be professional. So they don't go to spam. Three, company data should not stored on the devices. That's a real generic answer, yeah, like storing company data on the devices. But I mean, in an emergency, obviously, you had to download the file to email it. But they probably want you to delete it after or some kind of thing like that. I guess. I guess. Yeah, I'll put a question mark on it because there are plenty of things that I could say there. But explain how the actions of these employees can negatively impact the company. Okay, having no password can result in someone someone stealing your phone and sending no and eavesdropping on your on the email conversation potentially revealing secrets explain how the actions of the employees yeah so i'll just take one any one of them yeah if you don't have a password having a password will allow people to get that all right that's it yeah. What I will say is that the paper had a lot of room for interpretation for some of the questions, which is usual for IT Unit 2 paper. Um, the room for interpretation is always tricky with IT Unit 2 because their mark scheme has certain things that they want you to say, but students end up saying things that just make sense for the question. So I don't think it was easy as children said it was. I don't think it was as easy as they said. Everybody was like, sir, kick, real kick, real kick. Must be because you get to write what answers you want because it made sense. But in the Caribbean Examinations Council, these criminals, I wouldn't call them criminals, these people sometimes don't take logical answers and just look for their specific answer that they want to get. Yeah, but the normalization questions and the data flow diagram questions, this ERD question, I think I do too much, but um, I ain't too sure. But I know for sure if you have anything close to this, you'll get all the mark. And yeah, but everything else was okay. So the paper was good, the paper was good. I don't think it had any dumb, dumb questions. It just had questions that that um, had a lot of different possible answers. So thank you very much, guys. And um, it was a good run. May the force be with you, wherever you go. But well, this is the way. Thanks for passing through, Amos. I hope, I hope your students do well. <laughs>